go with me for a few minutes. I was going one way, uh, and then, you know, I remember the old time preacher would say, the Lord changed his thought, as if the, as if the Lord didn't know what he wanted before the foundation of the world. Uh, it's the preacher who didn't know what the Lord wanted. And so, I think I caught up now. Uh, go with me to Daniel chapter 3. And I won't keep you long. Uh, you know, some messages you can uh, get into and, and find a way out of quickly. Uh, others, you get stuck. You, you just got to go all the way. In Daniel chapter 3, of course, we know you very well uh, of Nebuchadnezzar and uh, the king, of course, made an image of gold. And I'll read very quickly. Uh, whose height was three score cubits and the breadth three score thereof. And he set it up in the plain of Dua in the province of Babylon. This is Daniel chapter 3. And of course, the king, he sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, of course, they repeat all of them. Uh, they gathered together unto the dedication, verse Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before the image that the king had set up and then and Herod cried aloud to you it is commanded O people nations and languages that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet flute harp, sultry dulcimer and all kinds of music you fall down and worship the golden image that the Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and whoso there's always you know there's always something and whoso falleth and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time when you hear, of course, the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but sultry, and all kinds of music, all the people in languages fell down, worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Uh, wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live for Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but sultry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, uh, that he would be cast into the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set up. Now, and I imagine they emphasize who thou hast set up over the affairs of the province of Babylon. And to go, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, notice now, rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach and Abednego. And then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake unto and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not ye serve my gods? Now, notice now, he separates his gods an image nor worship the golden image which I have set up now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet flute harp sack but sultry and ducimer and all kinds of music you fall down and worship the image which I have made well but if you worship not ye shall be cast this same hour in the midst of a burning fire furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. We're not careful at all to answer you concerning this matter. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up now notice 19 then was nebuchadnezzar full of and the form of his visage was changed against shadrach meshach and abednego he commanded the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than it was he got all his mighty men and told them to throw them in the and of course the mighty men died outside the fire 
and the boys were alive in the fire and he looked in the fire and he was astonished in verse 24 and rose up in haste and said, counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said unto the king true king he answered and said lo i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no and the form of the fourth and the real interpretation should be is like one of the gods like the son of god uh, look at somebody uh, with all the ebullience you and tell them i'm not built to break when you consider and i i, I think i should consider Nebuchadnezzar first because Nebuchadnezzar believe it or not was a mystic, egomaniacal tyrant he was extremely have you ever seen anyone who is really sold on themselves and it's interesting that he conquered Nineveh, a city that was claimed never to be conquered at the age of 17. He conquered at the age of 17 and uh, he conquered them with 50,000 men who uh, the historians call Scythians. The Scythians were regarded as the fiercest group who had ever lived at the time and they were so mean and so cruel that when they'd conquer people they would tie the foreign soldiers to their chariots and they'd pull them apart running the chariots in four different directions and nebuchadnezzar controlled them not with any sort of council not kind of government Nebuchadnezzar controlled them by the fierceness of his own personality and character he controlled these men uh, by the age of 25 old ruler he conquered and he controlled the world by the age of 25 can you imagine having a narcissistic ego tyrannical person who controls the world at the age of 25. Now I don't mind being around people with power if they handle it. And my mother's here. Just wave your hand, mom. It's good to see you. And uh, it's all right to be around people who have great power as long as they have balance. It's like giving your child power over you and over everything around you when they aren't mature enough to be able to handle it. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the kind of fellow that you just didn't play with because you didn't know where he was at any given time. He may choose to put an image up of himself and the image, uh, according to history, was not of one of his gods, but the image was an image himself and three Hebrew boys obviously they confronted him in a very powerful manner and they stood up against him in a way that showed they believed God. Uh, I'm going in here very easy because I want you to understand that it is difficult to grasp that they could have had any faith at all particularly with through and let me argue it from another point of view whenever you see any kind of battle in the Old Testament you will understand that the battle is actually a battle of gods it's a battle of gods because each nation went before their God before they went into battle and it was assumed then that the God who was most proficient the was most powerful would give them the victory in battle 
The interesting thing here is that God, Jehovah, has never had an image of himself put up. He would not allow an image of himself because any image of himself would have to be garnished by our sensual perception. Uh, God has allowed himself to be outside of our sensual perception which means that none of us have seen him we have not smelled him and when the Bible says oh taste and see that the Lord is he's not speaking about tasting him literally but rather it's metaphorically to indulge yourself in the things of God and wonder how great he can be I have never heard him people said the Lord spoke to me but he has never called my name audibly. I have never heard him say, Noel, Noel, I need to talk to you. I, I haven't quite had that privilege. I have not touched him with my hands. Because he leaves himself outside of our sensual perception. Whereas the other nations, they were able to form gods and they and uh, they had their gods in visibility and of course uh, my god cannot be brought within the parameters of sensual perception because how do you form the shape of an omnipresent god i mean what shape would you have of him it was always a battle of gods because each nation would go to their god and Israel's difficulty was that he would not allow himself within the parameters of sensual perception. Ooh. I think I like that because what he does is when he takes himself outside of perception, then he has to speak to us on a spiritual level. Uh, that means that the relationship with God cannot be cognitive, it can't be intellectual, really. It's got to spiritual and it's where his spirit speaks to my spirit over the bridge of faith and then he lets my spirit talk to my mind uh, can I go over that again uh, I'm going I'm, right, so I'm gonna talk to this group over you see uh, because of sensual perception sensual perception limits you to whatever your senses can garnish but when he outside of your sensible perception what he's saying essentially is that the relationship that I want to have with you is not cognitive or intellectual but the relationship that I want to have is very spiritual in order to grasp this even further we think a little bit about the Holy Spirit that maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered that cannot be uttered is not a mm, is not a mm. if it can't be uttered there is no sound at all which means that God is making deposit spirit that you are not cognitively aware of mm -hmm. uh, he spoke to Elijah if I may uh, go further and he spoke to Elijah in a steel voice and please tell me if you will what is a still small voice it is a voice that you're not picking up audibly but rather it's going to your see God has left himself outside of our sensual perception so that he might deal with us deeply in our spirits and then he lets our spirits talk to our minds about that is not intellectually deduced it is not cognitively achieved because it's something that is just in your spirit oh, I feel something happening already interesting because somebody's holding out on me and the fact is how can you have peace which passeth all understanding if your relationship with God is simply intellectual 
because if the peace he gives you has to be a spiritual peace that your mind cannot even conceive of why you are so peaceful according to every have cognitively deducted you should be one mess right now but because he has made a deposit in your spirit and he has spoken to your spirit you have an assurance that even explain uh, somebody still holding out on me uh, I think I'll take it further uh, there were two boys in their mother's womb there were two boys in two separate wombs his name was John and the other was Jesus the two boys were unconscious in their mother's womb I know Jesus is God but he was not reading the Jerusalem Tribune in his mother's womb uh, if he's human at all he is unconscious in his mother's womb the two mothers came together I think it's Mary who went out into the country to visit Elizabeth and the two in their mother's womb separated by two thin layers of cutaneous tissue and yet still when the mothers came together the Bible said that John leapt in his mother's womb he was in the presence of Jesus to show you how spiritual it is the man John the boy is unconscious in his mother's womb yet even in his unconscious state receives revelation of who Jesus is and indeed and in fact he receives the Holy Spirit without saying hallelujah 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 Jesus 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 now years later the conscious John sends word to Jesus oh God I, I wonder do you get it the unconscious John had no doubt about who Jesus was yet the conscious John sends messages and asks, are you the one or should we look for another and I just wrote don't ever let your mind talk you out of your revelation <laughs> it, 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 it was a battle of gods you see it was a battle of and notice, if you will, that the three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, the three Hebrew boys had been on a steady decline. It's not that they had just walked into Babylon and they were standing as real I say, advocates or ambassadors from Israel. If you notice the decline, First of all that they were defeated by Nebuchadnezzar because Israel couldn't actually be defeated by anybody if they walked according to the principles of I am not afraid of my enemies when I'm walking in principle uh -huh. you got haters everywhere but I'm not afraid of my haters when I'm walking in it's when I'm walking outside of the principles of God that I have to worry about the rumors and about who is going to bring me down. Because as long as I'm walking of the principles of God, then I don't have to worry about what anybody has to say. Because it's the principle that protects. I don't want to be too helter skelter here said to his disciples he says obey my commandments and abide in my love because as long as you're walking within the confines of my commandments then formed against you can prosper the enemy can only get you when you're walking outside of the principles of God uh, many of us say well we have angels to protect angel an angel is a messenger it is not the angel that protects you as much as the message that the angel brings because if you walk within the parameters of the world, it doesn't matter how many haters are around you 
and I'll just give you this one if you don't have any haters you're not that gifted uh, and, and it's significant it's very important because Israel would not walk according to the principles of God the Lord raised up nations to chasten them to bring them back within of his word he would raise up nations and because everybody thought it was a battle of gods then they thought that Jehovah had lost his power if you look see often where he tells them I am God and beside me there is no other if you think that you're being defeated because some other God is greater than me you're making a mistake I'm the one who's whooping you through them. I raise them up and I take them down because if you walk according to my principles, you never have to worry about any. I want you to see the extent of the spirituality and the connection of the spirit that these fellas had with God. Now, first of all, they have lost the battle, and secondly, they are taken out homeland. Uh, they are the most pristine and the most significant of all of the fellows in Israel because Nebuchadnezzar made sure that he collected the most pristine, the most physical, pulchritudinous, magnanimous splendor. He made sure that they had no blemish, that they were intellectually alert and astute enough to understand astrology and to learn everything that was significant to his nation he took the best of the best the creme of the creme i mean he took the fellows who were just everything not only had they lost the battle they lost their place not only did they lose their place they also lost all of the treasures that belonged to the temple not only place lose the treasures lose the battle he took them over and he made eunuchs out of them uh-huh yes he did indeed now can you imagine now i'm serving on a downhill slide i'm on a downhill slide where we have lost the battle we have lost all of our precious and all of our sacred stuff we have lost Place, and now we have lost our manhood with all of the beauty and the wonder of who we are we will never produce an offspring because Nebuchadnezzar has made eunuchs all of us now can you imagine where faith could possibly come from when they have been losing from the day that they lost their battle to this day and yet they have the unmitigated gall and audacity to say to the king we are not going to bow oh, I feel it here a few minutes to go I promise I will not keep you long when you understand that the sensual perception is always against faith because what you have is sight faith and every child of God has to deal with the reality of your environment the things that you see and the reality of the things that you don't see uh, the Greeks when they fear, they talked about fear from the word phobos and it means flight and anytime you see phobia of any kind that's the root the etymological root word is phobos and it that which causes one to be scared it's something that introduces terror and 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 the terror generally comes from your sensual perception from what you see for what you hear and and, and then of course they added another word to it uh, and this word is delia this is not something that comes necessarily from the outside this is just an added individual has uh, you can raise two children and one's very bold and the other is just timid 
just timid by nature not timid by circumstances just nature are just timid just scared to do everything some people are just shy uh, it's the word that Paul deals with when he talks about Timothy and Timothy uh, he wants him to be bold and he doesn't want him wants him to be able to partake of the affliction of the gospel and so it's not just an act now the Delia speaks more of a spirit it's a kind of way now can you imagine being timid by nature and then being scared by circumstance you know I'm already timid please for God's sake don't bring anything around me that's going to be scary because my genetics already lead me to be timid now there should be a certain amount of caution in everybody's life because caution helps you to assess certain and teaches you how to position yourself but when it comes to being in a situation that you have absolutely no control over then you have to be able to trust I'm here to tell you for those of us who trust the least we want to control the most because if I can control it then I don't have to trust it uh -huh, you know Gave you a beeper that's why he gave you all of those machines so that and he's already timed how long it takes to go to the grocery store and get back it ought to be 15 minutes over 15 minutes back uh, three minutes for the groceries and uh, to get it in and out of the car and after that I'm calling because the more you can control the less you have to trust uh, trust you're in a situation where you don't have any control it's either you're going to trust or lose your mind uh, I feel something happening I'm I'm coming I'm almost it's critical because now the word for caution uh, to the Greeks then became reverence and godly fear and the whole idea is if I'm going to fear any I need to fear God who can put both body and soul into hellfire. I don't need to fear anybody less than God because God is the only total charge over everything. So even though I'm on a downhill slide, I'm not connected to God through my sensual perception. I'm connected to God through Spirit, which means you can mess with everything I can sensually perceive but you can't break my spirit uh, I feel it here uh, let me go to the text very quick Talk a little about the Hebrew the Hebrew word uh, for fear is pahad and it's a very strong verb of fearing with the emphasis on the immediacy of the object of fear in other words fine until something shows up that sets you off to the point where you even begin to tremble it's a strong emotion of fear I don't know have you ever been there but I've been there in my life where I was just about having a panic attack anybody familiar with panic attack it's the kind of place where you can't find any peace it's the kind of place where you think you're going to any minute and generally it has been stimulated by something that's external that's trying to become internal uh, it's trying to break where you see Satan just doesn't want you to have experiences without leaving a mark uh, what he wants you to do is go through something that leaves you psychologically debilitated so that the for you to make a move you're so caught up in the past with the things you have failed in that you will not take a step that is guided by the Spirit of God oh he wants to down have I told you touch your neighbor yet oh, it's coming just hold on uh, it's a critical piece because now it's the object that causes fear that allows the subject to tremble 
point is to intimidate and, and break you down to feel as if you cannot stand in the midst of what's about to happen. Uh, the Lord said to the judges in Israel, Fear not the face of men. Uh, don't let any social position or any adversary in any litigation intimidate you and sway you from your judgment. If you know right, then stand to it. Uh, the next Hebrew word was one that is to pursue or cast down. It, it's a word that talks about driving. Uh, the enemy wants to drive you. And again, talking about external stuff we're talking about horrific people horrific situations that are designed for the outward display to generate an inward break how long are you going to be there with all of your talent and allow some little chip that's missing to keep you from being all that you can be uh, when are you going to what you didn't achieve yesterday for what you can achieve tomorrow when are you going to allow yourself to be released from satanic control over your because you are already gifted but what Satan wants to do is use your sensual perception to cause your environment to control your thinking what God is allow your faith in his spirit and word to talk to your mind to tell your mind that you're not driven from the outside but you're driven from the inside and when you stand up with what's inside what's outside has got to bow down oh, I feel something helping oh, just give me give me just a few more be through you see now faith on the other hand is the substance of things hoped for it is actually the hypostasis of things hoped for it is the elicos of things not seen so what we have now is we have substance and we have assurance or conviction it's something when you can have a conviction that has nothing to do with perception I'm looking at a horrific situation but I am convicted that this situation does not determine where I go it is not my circumstances controls me but rather it is my faith in the mighty God uh, can I take it another way uh, Moulton and Mulligan when they look at the word hypostat regard it as a title deed and what it says essentially is that this is a title for what I have hoped for in God I buy properties all over the place just bought some way over in some island and I haven't seen it yet and somebody said well how do you know you have it I say because I have the title I don't have to see in order for me to declare it's mine because I have the title uh, Moulton and Milligan says that faith is the title of the things that you have believed for oh, yeah, can, I, can, can I preach just a minute uh, 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 for, for 45 years Caleb had the title he had never walked in the land but he had uh, now touch somebody for the first time and tell them I'm entitled uh, uh, for everything I believe God for I'm entitled uh, I'm entitled to be more than I am because I've been restricted by fear because of my circumstance but now that I've connected to God and I believe God I am entitled to the that I have believed him for. Uh, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. I feel it coming on. When I looked at the text and I understood this, that there are some unseen realities 
what I need is internal evidence of ownership and this is what I call assurance it brings us then to the New Testament word pistis and this is a firm persuasion or a conviction of something that I believe if you don't believe it who will uh -huh. if you can't stand up for what you believe who will uh, you have to stand up you don't need a committee to become what God would have you to be uh, I feel it now mm. all right just keep me right there uh, it's important to understand why God has outside of our perception our sensual perception and I'm glad he did because no one of us can dictate to the other one of us how we conceptualize God. I don't have to have your concept of God I am free to have my own concept of God because he's left himself outside of my sensual perception it draw a picture of my God and I know that we're in the same church but each one of us have an idiot concept of God it's idiot it's complete because I can't believe God the way you do and you can't believe God the way I do because it's idiosyncratic it's mine and I see him where you don't see him conceptualize him where I don't that's why we fellowship because it takes all of us to put together the complete picture of a mighty God if you choose all, that's your business but you cannot impose a small God on me because I choose to make him big and that's what I want him to be something happening in here oh god i feel it just uh, give me just a few more minutes it's true now then that fear has an object but faith has an object also and you've got is your God bigger than what you're looking at? Is your God bigger than Nebuchadnezzar? Because even on the downhill slide from being the pristine princes to becoming eunuchs, losing even their manhood, they still had the nerve to stand before the king and say, first of all, knowledge says he's able. But faith says he will. Uh, but commitment says if he don't even do it, we're still not going to bow. I'm almost there. I feel. Give somebody a high five. Say he's almost there. Uh, it's a critical piece here now because uh, I used to simply think that uh, that faith, on the one hand, said uh, that uh, he is a faith says he will of course knowledge says he's able but he's sovereign which means that he's God he may or he may not the issue is we're still not going to bow I can't I die because if I can't live for what I would die for then my life is not worth living so I can't lose if I die and I sure can't lose if he delivers me the only way I can lose is if I bow and that's and that's not what I'm going to do uh, I can't lose if he brings me out and I can't lose if leaving but if I bow then you have got the advantage over me so king let me just tell you I am not going to bow which means you can't win if you you can't win if you leave me alive you can't win because I am not built to break oh, I feel something happening here uh, take my house if you take my car if you want walk out on me if you choose turn your back on me if you want to but that's not going to break me because I'm not built to break 
feel the Holy Ghost here. Uh, I just come to tell you there have been trying times and these have been hard times particularly for us who walk in the kingdom of God because for 25 I've heard nothing but health wealth and prosperity for 25 years we have given in every offering and by now all of us should be millionaires the word is that more are losing our minds than any other time in the history of the African American race and we're losing our minds over things I feel like preaching now but me can you frighten Lazarus with death he already died before and I don't know why you're losing your mind over being broke you've been broke before uh, I feel like having just a little church I feel like having a little church give somebody a high five and say neighbor not built to break I've got too much anointing to fall apart I've got too much of the word in me to let the devil cause me to think that I'm gonna lose my mind lose my mind over losing a house cuz I'm gonna need my mind to decorate the next one I'm not gonna lose my mind over losing a man cuz I'm gonna to be good to the next one I'm not going to lose my mind over losing a woman because I'm going to lose my mind to make sure the other one is alright give some say I'm not losing my mind because I wasn't built to break if I was going to break I'd have broken a long time ago because I've been to hell and back and I lifting up the name of the Lord if I were gonna break I would have broke when Satan had my house twisted and turned upside down but I found out stand the trial there's something on the inside that no matter how low I get it bounces back thought I was gonna walk out but my anchor holds the solid rock I'm not built to break in the middle of the storm because the reason the house is still standing is not because of the storm the storm the winds may come but the reason the house is still standing is because it's built on the right foundation shake somebody's hand for the third time and say neighbor been built on the right foundation I've been built on the Word of God I've been built on the solid rock and I heard him say upon I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it get somebody high five for the fourth time and say neighbor I've got a piece of the I've got a piece of the rock anytime you think you're gonna drive me off you better remember I got rock up in here I got solid rock that's why I on the word of God and I give somebody a high five say not only do I have the word but I am anointed I am anointed if I weren't anointed my way if I weren't anointed I'd have lost my mind but something that's inside of me says get up again shake yourself get and let the world know it ain't over yet it ain't over yet I've been walked on you've been talked about you've been mistreated you've been drowned Still here, still praising him. They left you for dead a long time ago, but you're still lifting up the name of Jesus. I'm not built to break.
give somebody a high five for the second to the last time and say, neighbor, I'm here to stay. That changed my mind. The first thing is, our God I serve is able to deliver out of the fire. Can I preach like I feel it? Give somebody a high five. Said, so do you know how many times I've been delivered out of the fire? The fire, job, the fire to get me fired. The fire of talking about me. The fire of trying to hurt me. The fire of trying to be who I am. But I've been delivered. again say I'm still here look like what I've been through because not even a hair on my head has been since but I've been in the fire and they look and saw fourth one well, I feel like preaching give somebody a high five for the last time and tell him somebody's with me Somebody's with me. Somebody's with me. Name is I'm not built to break. Touch three people look. I'm not built to break. I'm still here. Closing time is a
I closed already three times. I'm going to close for the closing time. First view of that, that the response to Nebuchadnezzar was, he, the God we serve is able, and I ascribe that to he's able and he will deliver us out of your hand and I he will and if not we're not going to commitment I meditated on it further and I discovered something first of all we need to fire hot I'm going to cast you into the fiery furnace that was separate. See, I, I assume that delivering them from the fiery furnace was the first two. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to put you in the furnace. And who is that God that will deliver you out of my Which makes now for a separate issue because the first issue now is to be delivered out of the fire the second is to be delivered out of his hand see you can have a boss who is seeking to fire you and she tries in january and fails She tries in February and fails. So even though you've been delivered from the incident, you're still not delivered. Because she's still the boss. deliver us out of your hand. Now, when Daniel was in the lion's den, God spoke to him, but he didn't show up. When Israel was coming out of Egypt, God delivered them, but he didn't lead the charge. So why is he in the fire? See, he's in the fire not to deliver them from the burning fiery furnace because they were already delivered from that when they were put around. What he showed up to do uh, we over here in Crenshaw District this is Crenshaw and we used to be over on, uh, on Hoover. Now we got a little more sophistication. We went out to Gardena. But, but you all know when somebody's being punked. Yes, yes, yes. And it goes, because now he says, I see a fourth one. And the fourth one looks like one of the gods. You were punking my boys outside the fire. Now I'm getting ready to punk you inside the fire. And what I'm saying to you is touch my boys again. Mess with them again. Mess with them again if you feel like it. Understand who you dealing with. You ain't dealing just with these boys. You dealing Nebuchadnezzar swore that day that they would worship no other God because he is the most God's getting ready not only to take you out the situation but you out of there Woo, shake somebody's hand now you're going to shake it off and tell them I'm not built to break God didn't put me together Heart. Take one person by both hands.
Get a prayer partner. Listen by both hands. Paul taught me not only to pray before, but pray after. Pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know three things. The exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. A friend of mine said something to me in one of my most gloomy times. He said to me, he said, no, who's in there thinking with you? Psychologist Miami. He said, he said, ain't nobody up here thinking but you. You're the one doing the thinking in here. So whatever you allow yourself to think. Is either going to break you or strengthen you. Who's thinking in there? Every negative thing that's been suggested, you don't have to think on it. Nobody's controlling your thought mechanism but you. So, so whatever things are pure, honest, good report. Think on the things that strengthen you. Sometimes you got to eliminate to elevate. And you got some people around you that just got to go. They got to go. Father, you said to us, whatever things we bind on earth are bound in heaven. It's everything to lose in heaven. You gave us that authority. Squeeze one hand. I bind doubt. I bind low self esteem. I bind depression. I bind. I bind every negative thought that would flow through my brother, my sister right now. I bind worry and anxiety. I come against that spirit right now. Everything that the Holy Ghost has to give in the name of Jesus, I bind it now. I bind short sightedness, I bind procrastination. Get up, shake yourself while it's day for the night cometh when no man shall work. This is your season, and I squeeze the other hand. I lose power, I lose anointing, I lose creativity.